This is the second video in a series on budgets. In the last video, I showed you this budget right here that's up on the screen that I got from the University of Maryland. This was a budget for a backyard chicken operation. The logic behind this budget was just simply showing people what it would cost to operate a backyard chicken flock in order to have eggs for your own consumption. Now, if you caught that video, you know it's not really financially viable to do this. This is the kind of thing that you do for fun. So you have some eggs that you get from your chickens. You have a good time raising the chickens. What I want to do in this video right here is talk about how you could scale that process up and see if you could possibly turn it into a profitable business. So let's pop right into Excel and give that a look. So what I've done here is I've just taken that budget and I've modified it a little bit. I've got a business name here at the top of the budget. This is a free range layer budget for the urban egg farm. So imagine if you would somebody with a reasonably sized backyard or maybe a small farm and they're having a few chickens kind of run loose in a fenced in area. So what we're going to do is we're going to imagine a flock size of 50 birds. So basically what we're going to be doing is doubling the size of the flock in the previous video. That video is based on a 25 hen flock and we're just going to follow the logic of that video except do it with 50 hens. And the way we're going to do it is it's going to be a little bit different. What we're going to do is we're going to buy 25 hens in year one. And those hens are going to take 180 days before they're really ready to start laying eggs. So you have a period where you're not going to get any eggs. And then in year two, we're going to buy 25 more. So there's going to be a total of 50 hens. You'd probably want to separate these things into groups or tag them in some way so you could identify which ones are which. That would be an important thing to do. And so you've got a group of 25 that are in full production that at the end of the year will hit that point where their egg production starts to slow down. So we're going to remove them from the herd at the end of the second year. So you've got a group in the first year that's chicks and they're growing and a group in the second year that's mature and laying eggs. These are the ones that are really making you your money. And so based on that budget, we're going to see how well this plan might work where you've got 25 that are that are in their first year reaching maturity and it'll start producing eggs 25 in their second year going to reach maturity start producing eggs and at the end of the second year because the egg production drops off we're going to remove them from the herd so here's what we have up at the top we have a flock size of 50 that's the total number of birds in the flock at any given time and we always start our budgets with the good news that's the thing to always remember that's what goes at the top after all the kind of paperwork stuff your name and that kind of thing so we start off lifting the revenue. Now you might see this called different things. You might see it called sales. You might see it called receipts or gross receipts. You might see it called cash receipts, but there's some terminology we're going to put at the beginning of this to indicate that it's money flowing in. I like to use the word revenue because as an economist, we think of things in terms of revenue and cost. So that's where my mind goes to immediately. But I think other budgets that I've seen online would call it something different, but that's okay. We have some word that indicates it's money coming in. So we're going to sell over this one year period. This is a, a the budget for the year 2025. We're going to sell 800 dozen eggs in a year. Now, uh, the majority of those eggs are coming from your mature hens because the immature ones aren't laying any eggs yet. And we're going to assume, assume that's a magic word right there, that we can get $4 per dozen for these eggs. And what we're going to notice is that the price you get for the eggs turns out to be really important. Your revenue is very sensitive to that price. That's going to give us a total of $3,200 a year in revenue. And then that gives us a per bird average of $64. And I just took this $3,200. Let me show you the formula here in Excel. Uh, the $3,200 in blue and divided it by the flock size in red. And I did that so that a person could, in theory, take this budget and scale it up quite easily. Then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to produce a few stewing hens because at the end of the second year of life, when those hens start to uh, reduce their production, when their egg production starts to fall, we're going to remove them from the herd. And by doing so, we're going to turn them into something we can sell, a stewing hen. Uh, we're going to assume, again, assumption, <laughs> that's <laughs> assuming is a very dangerous thing. We have to have some reason for that number. Uh, we're going to assume that we can sell those for $10 each. That would be $200 total. And of course, our per bird number really isn't a, uh, the number you would think it would be. It's just the average for our 50 herd flock. And so at the end of the day, we have a revenue of $3,400. 
which is $68 on average per bird. So every time you see a bird out in the field, you're thinking, hey, that bird is bringing in $68. All right, moving on to the bad news. The bad news is you've got to spend money to make money. So we have variable expenses. These are expenses that go up as the number of birds we have increases. So if we get a few more birds, these will all go up. Just like in the Maryland example, we're going to imagine that we're going to be buying the baby chicks. Now, if you really wanted to do this right, you'd get some roosters and you wouldn't, or maybe a rooster. I have no idea how many roosters you need for 50 chickens, but you'd get a rooster and you would use that rooster to reproduce these chicks. So you can save a little bit of money there having a rooster, which would be the, probably the smarter direction to go in. Uh, some people don't like having roosters around, especially if you're in an urban environment because they can be loud. They can wake up the neighbors. They can be aggressive. And, you know, it's up to you to decide when you're building your operation whether you want to have roosters around. I know the city I live in specifically bans roosters. Uh, you can have backyard chickens, but you can't have roosters. That's also something important, a little side note there. Check all the laws to make sure you can do this. The subdivision I live in has a deed restriction specifically saying you can't have chickens. So we've got to buy chicks. They're $3 each. You're going to buy 25 a year. Again, this average of $1.50 is really not relevant because that average is you know, the cost for the entire uh, herd or the entire flock, rather. So it's hard to interpret that number in a meaningful way. So you're going to spend $75 a year on these chicks. And as we noted before, you want to make sure the chicks have been vaccinated properly. You want to make sure that they're all, all kosher and they're good quality chicks. Now we have to feed them. And since we're just adopting the budget from before, we're going to have a group that's on a starter, a group that's on, a, on, on the grower feed, and a group that's on the layer feed. Because there's a group that's maturing and there's a group that's mature. The mature group is going to get the layer feed. So I'm thinking you probably need a fence and two coops and you need to separate both of these flocks so that you have a set that's getting the layer feed and you have a set that's getting the grower feed and you can keep them all sorted out and make sure they're getting the right kind of feed. That's one of the things you've got to do if you want to do this right because you've got to take care of the animals properly. We are also assuming up here in the uh, revenue section that we're going to be losing some percentage of the hens because animals die sometimes. It's just part of life. And we have all our breakdown for these different types of feed. Again, this is just taken right from the budget before. You would do a little bit of research to find out what a bag of feed cost, and you just multiply. Here's the formula in the spreadsheet. It's just uh, C5 asterisk B5 to multiply. Pretty simple, straightforward formula. And I've taken this and broken it down a little more and created a feed subtotal. The feed subtotal is just, excuse me, here it is. The feed subtotal is just the sum of the three types of feed. So we have a feed subtotal. And I like doing a separate feed subtotal because that's information that we need to make decisions. Because if we can find a way to save expenses by buying different feed, that might be a good idea. For example, the main component of this feed is probably just corn. So corn, for example, as I'm as I'm re as I'm filming this, is somewhere between three and four dollars a bushel, and a bushel is uh, 56 pounds. So instead of buying a, a 50 pound bag of chicken feed, maybe you can figure out how much of that is some kind of mineral supplement or like protein meal that's in the feed, and how much of it is just corn. And you can probably just buy corn and feed it to the chickens and save a little bit of money. So I like to break the feed expense into a separate category so that you can look at how changing the feed impacts your cost. Because if you can get a quality feed that doesn't cut your egg production and get that quality feed for less, that's a thing you should be thinking about doing. And again, that's important because our feed expense is one of our biggest expenses in this operation. Then we're going to total our variable expenses up. And this is just the total of, in this particular case, the chicks and the feed. There are no other variable expenses in this operation. That's not to say there shouldn't be more variable expenses in the operation. These are just the ones that I've put in my budget. And maybe after you run a business like this for a couple of years, you realize something else belongs in the budget. You start spending money and realize where you've got to make the changes. And then we have a number here, gross margin. Let me read you a textbook definition from a textbook. The book I'm using is Principles of Agribusiness Management by James Byerlin and some others. All righty. Gross margin or gross profit is what remains after subtracting the cost of goods sold from revenues. Gross margin shows the income that remains to cover operating expenses, you know, your overhead. Gross margin is equivalent to contribution. Contribution. 
So gross margin might not be the best word to use here. We might want to call it contribution or the contribution margin. So I'm going to throw the word contribution in there. So, so the idea here is that we're going to total up our expenses and then we're going to subtract revenue minus expenses. And when we subtract revenue minus expenses, what we're left with is the money that can contribute to overhead. That's what we call it, the contribution or the contribution margin. And here the per bird number is really important and really relevant. Every bird is going to give you on average, not each one, but just on average, $43.92 to contribute to all the other expenses in the business. And I put it right here at this point because here's kind of where I wanted to put it. So after you've bought the chicks and fed the birds, you're going to have $43.92 per bird per year to put into your overhead. Now, overhead can mean a lot of other things. Uh, it can mean things like energy, electricity for like running your heat lamps and that kind of thing. Uh, I've left that out of this budget. It's probably something that should be in there. And so as you learn how to develop budgets, you kind of learn what to add into the budget. And now I'm just going to break things down to my fixed expenses. Uh, we have supplies. These are things like the heating lamp that the, uh, the, the that our source recommends that you buy. And you know, it'll last you two years if you don't drop the darn thing. All right. And who knows what all supplies you need? You're going to need lots of other supplies. I threw in $80 for maintenance. You got to have a fence. You got to keep the fence maintained. You got to keep your chicken coop maintained. You're going to spend some money maintaining things. You'll need to buy some tools. You'll need to buy some supplies in order to run this operation. I threw in depreciation. Uh, so what I basically did was I took the value of the chicken coop that was shown previously, and I imagined we'd be able to use that chicken coop for some period of time. And I just use a straight line depreciation method to get the fixed costs of the chicken coop. Now we do it that way so that the chicken coop doesn't have to get billed to one particular year. It gets spread out over time. If you'll hang around to the end of the video, I'll give you some guidance on depreciation. Uh, interest. So it's going to cost. We're making the assumption that you've borrowed some money in order to buy your chicken coop. And you might say, hey, I didn't borrow any money to buy my chicken coop. I just bought my chicken coop. Well, what you've got to remember is that even though you're not paying interest on the chicken coop, the money you spent on the coop could have been put into an investment. So if it's not interest, we call it cost of capital. And so there's some interest rate. I think I went with 5%. Uh, a 5% interest rate is what you borrowed money on. So, you, so I'm assuming you could have gotten 5% on your money or you spent 5% borrowing the money so that you could buy your chicken coop. And that's a reasonable thing to do. So we've got total fixed expenses per year of $900. And if we then take that $900 and we subtract our gross margin or our contribution from the $900, we get what we call the return to land, labor, and management. There should be some commas in here. Let me add some of those real quick. Now, it's real important that you notice that we're not calling it profit yet. We're calling it the return to land, labor, and management. What that means is we have it compensated ourselves for the labor we put into the operation. We haven't compensated ourselves for the land we're using on the operation. And we haven't compensated ourselves for our managerial ability, meaning if you're going to run one of these things, you're going to spend a lot of time and energy figuring out how to grow the chickens, what's the best feed, all that kind of stuff. That's going to take brain power to do that. And you need to be compensated for your brain power. That's what I mean when I say return to management. So I'm going to next total up the labor cost. Again, I'm just going to follow along with the labor cost from our example. I'm imagining that since our herd is twice as big, the amount of labor we're going to use is twice as much. And then I threw in an extra hour per year per bird. Why did I do that? Because in the previous video, our stewing hens had a cost associated with them. We had to drive them to a slaughter facility and pay to have them processed. I wouldn't recommend doing that. I would recommend doing that yourself. Uh, you can harvest them on your own and pluck them on your own and break them down and sell them. 
So we're imagining that you're just going to use your own labor in order to take care of that business. So we're going to have uh, 202.5 hours of labor over the course of the one year period, taking care of your chickens, harvesting the hens, preparing them for the market. And we're going to imagine that your labor is $15 an hour. Now, remember that your final result is going to be very sensitive to that number. If you're out there just getting paid by the hour, $15 an hour is about the going wage rate right now as I record this for a laborer working in a facility like a picker at Amazon or a a production line worker at a Tyson or someplace like that. So that's a pretty reasonable number. Now, the other thing to remember is you might be offloading the labor itself to a kid or something, right? You have the kid go out and work on the farm, you know, run the chicken operation, and they get the money that's left over and they get the, um, the ability to learn how to do things and the ability to learn how to take responsibility for things. So maybe we're just going to do seven and a quarter an hour, which is the minimum wage as I'm recording this. When we do that, the numbers change. OK, when we do that, our labor costs drop by a considerable amount. And we're basically at uh, one thousand four hundred and sixty eight dollars and 13 cents of labor or just under thirty dollars worth of labor every year per bird. That's a per bird average. And that gives us a slightly negative one hundred seventy two dollars and 13 cents return to the land that the farm is on and to the labor. So. Really, at the end of the day, it's not fair to say this thing made money because you've got to pay for all these expenses and you need to build into the budget the compensation for the labor. And we do that because we want to be realistic. It's perfectly OK to look at this and say, hey, it's all right. We, we're going to have almost thirteen hundred dollars a year. That's fine that if I had to pay someone's minimum wage to work on my farm, I would have lost money. I'm not paying anyone. And that's typically how this kind of thing works out. Now, the other thing we probably ought to do is we probably ought to take this per bird total and we probably should change that to per dozen egg total. So we're going to take this 3200 number and we're going to divide it by our 800 eggs in a year and go in and modify this right here. All right, I just cleaned up a little bit off camera, uh, deleting the numbers that are really meaningless. For example, the per dozen rate on our uh, on our stewing hens, really not a relevant number. So basically what we've got is every time we move a dozen eggs, we're going to have a gross margin or a contribution margin of $2.75. So it's going to cost us a total of $1.51 for those variable expenses in order to produce those eggs. Every time we move a dozen, uh, that gives us an extra $2.75 that we can put towards all of our overhead and our fixed expenses. And after we have covered our fixed expenses, the return to land, labor, and management is $1.62. The problem, of course, is there's $1.84 worth of labor in each dozen, and so we lose $0.22 cents a dozen after we have built into the budget the labor. Now again, this is a uh, now this video is for a class that's dedicated primarily to teaching students how to run small agricultural operations as a side hustle. I want to stop and think about that for a second because I want to make sure you've got the correct interpretation of that number given that context. The interpretation of that number given that context is that if you're really serious about making money, you probably should look into seeing if you could amp this up a little bit and make it instead of you know, 50 birds, uh, do 100 birds. But then you've got 100 birds in your backyard. And hey, then we're getting to the point where if you're doing this inside of a small town, you might, it might be a problem. And that gets to be a, a lot of birds and a lot of work. But right now, as it sits, if you had to compensate for yourself for your labor, it'd be losing money. But if this is a side hustle, that's OK. It's OK for you to look at this and say, hey, I'm going to bring in $1.62 per dozen. And it's OK that I'm not paying for the labor because I'm trying to bring in this money for some purpose. That's that's all right. Uh, but remember this in this context is these numbers are very sensitive to some key things. And one of them right here is the price that you sell your eggs for. If you can get $4 a dozen for your eggs, you're not quite making it worth your while. What if you can get $5 per dozen? 
Well, look at that. Now, even after you, you know, build in enough in the budget to compensate the teenager or the middle school age kid for, for feeding the chickens, you're going to be making 78 cents a dozen. So the amount you can sell that dozen for turns out to be extremely important. And so what you should be thinking about, you should be thinking about what can I do to add value to the product so that I can sell it at a higher price. For example, could you argue that these are organic eggs? Would it pay you to do the paperwork to become certified organic? These are the kind of things you need to be thinking about. How can you demonstrate to your customer that they're getting a free range egg and therefore should pay more for it? Sell brown eggs instead of white eggs. Brown eggs and white eggs are nutritionally the same and you really can't tell a difference in the flavor, but there are people who swear you can and will tell you all day long brown eggs are better than white eggs. I don't really think they are, but Sure, at the end of the day, if I can sell white eggs for $4 and brown eggs for $5, then I want to sell brown eggs and I want to tell people you can taste the difference. And that's important. And the way you market the business will impact the price you can sell for, and that's going to impact your bottom line. If you're trying to compete with the local grocery store that will sell a dozen eggs for less than $1.50, This is what it looks like, right? You're not having a positive return to land, labor, and management. You are straight up losing money feeding the chickens, and you're not even paying for any of the labor. It would be a bad idea to try to sell these for a buck fifty. The key to making money in an operation like this is to get your revenue up and get your costs down and do so in you know, whatever legal and fair and honest way that you can possibly do that. For example, if you're stewing hens, uh, we're 25 instead of 20. If you could get all of your hens to live through a year and you could sell these things for $5 a dozen, you start to see that the math changes. And that's one cool thing about building a budget and sticking it in a spreadsheet is you can go and you can tinker with these things. For example, how important is that supply budget? The source said that you can make a light bulb, a heating lamp bulb, last for two years if you handle it carefully. All right, well, what if you're very careful and you don't break the bulb and now this is down to $20, right? Things are looking a little bit better. What if you're what if you're able to trim off a little money off the maintenance? What if you can get that down to $40? Well, things look a little bit better. And the idea here is that if you're running it as a business and you're writing everything down, you can look and see where can I save some money. For example, I mentioned that you could probably save money on the feed bill by switching to corn. What if you could save $3 off each of these bags? What if you can get your feed expense down to under $1,000? Look at this. Now things are beginning to make more sense. And that is what I want my students to be thinking about and understanding and considering. Because there's no rule that says you have to lose money on your backyard egg operation. If you run it right, it'll make you money. And in this particular case right here, when we've gone in, looked at our expenses very closely and looked at our management strategy and we tried to find ways to save as much money as we could and not wasted money, we get to the point where we've got $1,000 a year return on our land and our management. We're getting to the point where this is beginning to make sense. So as long as we've made realistic decisions and as long as our budget matches reality, we start to see that this might be a good idea and a good business enterprise. Now, earlier I mentioned depreciation. The depreciation could be really important because the length of time those chicken coops survive really does matter. To learn more about depreciation, click on this video on the screen right here. And if you want to subscribe to the channel, just click on the tractor. And I'll see you next time.